Well, hello again, everybody. We're going to continue my series on my book, Word of Faith Preachers, How Misinterpretation of Scripture Might Lead You Astray. Uh, we're going to cover another section today, and it's a big one. It's a re This is a real doozer. We've been uh, covering how Word of Faith preachers, you know, how they misinterpret text and how they preach false doctrine. And sometimes they, they promote and they teach blasphemous and heretical doctrine. And this is the one we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about are Christians gods and therefore divine? Um, to give you my backstory, I was raised in the Prosperity Gospel Church, the Word of Faith, name it and claim it, we can speak it into existence. And I was part of the Creflo Dollar, Kenneth Copeland tree, and they were two big proponents of that doctrine. Uh, Kenneth Copeland is very infamous for saying, you know, cats beget cats and Dogs beget, you know, dogs, and therefore God begets gods. And so he's saying that we're, we're gods and divine. Um, Joyce Meyer has taught this. Kenneth Copeland has taught this. Um, friends of Kenneth Copeland, like Jesse Duplantis, basically uh, talk, teach this. Um, to my knowledge, uh, they, they do. And also, I know for a fact, Bill Winston... Uh, another one of uh, Kenneth Copeland's friends actually has a DVD series, and I talk about this in my book. Uh, Bill Winston has a DVD series called Understanding Your Divinity. Now, he did, now, he's not talking about the Holy Spirit. Now, if you were to say, you know, we have God in us, i.e. we have the Holy Spirit in us, I would be okay with that. But that's not what they're saying. And Kenneth Copeland actually says that. I actually, ha I actually have that quote in the book where he says, I'm not saying you have a God in you. I'm saying you are one, meaning a God. Um, that's what they teach. And now what you got to understand is, and in my book, I parallel this to the New Age movement of Opal Winfrey and her spiritual guru back in the day, Eckhart Tolle. Uh, they basically say Jesus didn't come to redeem us of our sin, uh, Jesus basically came to awaken us to the God consciousness within us. And through his death, we have been awakened to the God consciousness that apparently was already there. And Jesus had to come to wake us up to it. So therefore we could be now div divine beings or we could be part of the divine class of gods. Okay. So my point is the prosperity gospel word of faithers and the New Agers, they teach the same thing as far as we are now gods. Now, they take different roads of how they get there. But at the end of the day, those roads eventually will meet and they come to the same place. And that is, we are part of the divine class. We are divine beings and we are gods. Um, the prosperity gospel people, the word of faith, you know, word of faith people and the new age people both come to the same thing. My point is then, this is blasphemy, this is heresy, and this is not Christianity. This is not Christian doctrine. This is not sound biblical doctrine. This is actually New Age theology. And that is what Kenneth Copeland and Creflo Dollar and all those people have taught over the years for years. So I, I, I show that, and I, and I parallel those parallels between what they're saying and also the, the New Age. And if you ever get a chance to, to check out Melissa Dowdy's channel, she does a whole lot of work on the New Age teaching because she came out of the New Age movement. Just like I came out of the Prosperity Gospel Word of Faith movement, she came out of the New Age movement. So please check out Melissa Dowdy's page. She's got wonderful, wonderful stuff on the New Age movement. And you'll see how the Prosperity Gospel Word of Faith stuff, along with the NAR, and I did a video on the NAR, so please go back and check that out as well, how a lot of them teach the same stuff as New Age people do. Okay, so with that being said... So, like I said earlier, I mentioned Creflo Dollar. One of the, one of the scriptures that they misuse is in Genesis, um, where they say, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Now, the way that the Word of Faith Prosperity Gospel people teach that is since I'm made in God's image and his likeness, key word likeness, just as Jesus or God did things, we can do the same things as well. Another verse that they quote out of context is in 1 John 4, where it says, you know, God is love and in him there's, you know, there's no, you know, there's no, there's no torment or there's no fear in love because perfect love casts out all fear. And then right around that same place, it says, just as Jesus is, so are we in the world. And a lot of word of faithers take that to say everything Jesus did and said, I can do too. 
Well, in context there, when it says that just as Jesus is, so are we in the world, it was talking about the future judgment that God is going to do to everybody. And basically, so the, we have no fear and perfect love cast out fear, and there's no fear and torment and judgment because since we've been redeemed by Christ, we as believers have nothing to fear. So when it says perfect love cast out all fear, and it talks about just as Jesus is, so are we in the world, it's talking about just how Jesus is right with the Father in the world. We're now right with the Father in the world because we are now in Christ. That's why when the future judgment comes, we have nothing to fear. So my point is the context there is judgment. It's not we're gods and we can do everything that Jesus did. Okay? That's not the context or the interpretation of that verse. Okay? And again, I told you about Creflo Dollar, how he's very infamous by saying, you know, we're from the God class and, you know, cats beget cats and dogs beget dogs. And therefore, God begets gods. And they teach God was God or they teach Adam was God on the earth. Totally false teaching, totally false doctrine. But that's what Kenneth Copeland says. OK, so we're going to get into this. Um, are we really gods? And the answer is obviously no. But here are the two big verses that they really use to screw it up. Psalm 82 um, and John 10. Now, they, they, they talk about John 10 when Jesus said, you know, basically, why are you tripping that I'm saying, you know, I'm using the word gods? Doesn't it say in your word that you are gods? Okay, Jesus was quoting Psalm 82. So I'm going to go ahead and read Psalm 82 for you right now. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. Now, that word gods there is small letter G, which in the Hebrew is the word Elohim, which does which is a word for God. But it's lowercase there. It's Elohim's, okay, Elohim's and smaller case. And in the original Hebrew, that word there means rulers or judges or magistrates, okay? And that's how I translate it in my book. So it says, he standeth and judges among the gods, the rulers and judges and magistrates, Okay, in the Hebrew, and that's how I translate it again in my book. So keep that in mind. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the pers or persons of the wicked, Salah, which means pause and meditate and think about that. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. So these, this is a rebuke to them judges and rulers and magistrates because they weren't doing what they were supposed to do. They weren't judging rightly. Okay, deliver the poor and needy. Rid them of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said you are gods, again, Elohim, and all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like mere men. Okay, a god can't die, ladies and gentlemen, obviously. Okay, so they shall die. These judges and rulers and magistrates shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Okay? So, yes, the word Elohim is used there, but it means judges, rulers, and magistrates. And Jesus is now quoting Psalm 82 to prove his point, which was not that his audience were gods and not that we, the reader of the Bible, are gods or believers are gods. No, the point Jesus was saying in John 10 was that Jesus was God. So I'm going to go ahead and read John 10, and it reads like this. John 10, verses 32 through 39. Jesus answered them, many good works have I showed you from my father, for which of these works do you stone me? Because they wanted to stone him because he's basically saying he's God and they wanted to stone him for blasphemy. The Jews answered him saying, for good work we stone thee not, meaning for your good works we don't want to stone you, but for blasphemy and because thou being a man maketh thyself God. So they're saying right here and his Jewish audience is saying right here why they wanted to stone him to death. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law, I said ye are gods? Again, Jesus is quoting Psalm 82, which is what I just read. If you call them gods or Elohims, unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, say you of him whom the Father have sanctified and sent into the world, thou blaspheme, because I said I am the son of God? So Jesus is basically saying, why are you tripping that I'm saying I'm God. Doesn't it say in your word that you are gods? The whole point of this, though, is not to prove that the Jewish audience were gods. Was it to prove that Jesus is God? That's the, whole, that's the point of this whole narrative. And if I do the works of my Father, believe me not. Or it says, if I do not do the works of my Father, believe me not. 
But if I do them, though you believe not me, believe the works. So Jesus is saying, if you don't believe, if you don't believe me, but believe the works, and the works will basically testify of me, that you may know and believe in that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore, they thought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand. Um, verse 33, then Jesus answered, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which works of these do you stone me? The Jews answered saying, for good work, we, we don't want to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you call yourself or make yourself a mere man, make yourself be a God. Okay. So again, the whole point there, the whole point there, G I'm paraphrasing this. Jesus is basically saying, why are you tripping that I'm saying I'm God? Jesus saying I'm God. When doesn't it say in Psalm 82 that you're God, you're Elohims? So why are you so tripping that I'm using that moniker for myself? Because Jesus is saying, I am God. And why are you so surprised or why are you tripping that I use that language when it says that kind of language in Psalm 82? Jesus is now using Elohim to say he, he is Elohim. He is the Elohim above all the Elohims. He is the God of gods, the King of kings and Lord of lords. So Jesus is saying, why are you tripping that I'm using that word? When it says in your word in Psalm 82, it says, uses the word Elohim. Jesus is just taking that word Elohim, the big Elohim, and using it to himself. Okay, It was never applied to say the Jews or his audience were gods or we as believers are gods. That is not the point. The whole point of John 10 was to show that Jesus is divine and to, and to show his divinity not our divinity. Word of faithers don't preach it like that. They say, see, Jesus said, don't you know you're gods? Therefore, when we get, when we get saved, y'all, when we, get, we become saved, we become gods too. No, that's not what Jesus was saying. He quoted Psalm 82 to prove his divinity, not their divinity. Amen? The whole point of this is Jesus, not us. That's the whole point. Now I say, so I basically stopped there in my book. Now within the past month, um, I got introduced to Corey Miner's channel. I've, I was actually on his channel about a month ago. Great man of God. I don't agree with him on everything, but a great man of God. I love him and I love the fact he had me on, on his channel. He actually did a wonderful, wonderful video on this. Uh, Smart Christian channel, Corey Miner, called Are We Little Gods? And he has on there quotes of like Kenneth Copeland and Creflo Dollar and Joyce Meyer and all this little God's doctrine on there. And Corey came to the same conclusion that I did. And that is, no, we are not gods. We, we, we are not divine. We can't name it and claim it and blab it and grab it and speak it into existence. And I showed you on my, on my last video. Here's another one that they do where that's messed up. Romans 4, where it says, speak those things as not as though they were. And they use that to say, see, the saints, that's what we're supposed to be doing as gods. But if you go back and look at that Romans 4 story, it's talking about Abraham and how, how he believed God for his son Isaac in his old age. And it, so the speaking into existence, if you will, or speaking those things as not as though they were, that was God doing that, not Abraham. So Abraham didn't speak Isaac into existence. Okay, and because of that, because they misuse Romans 4, I've actually heard prosperity gospel preachers over the years say, see, when, 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 when God brought the animals to Adam, you know, Adam called it a, gi a giraffe, and we still call it a giraffe today. And God brought before him elephants, and we still call them elephants. So whatever Adam spoke, that's what it was. So we have power in our words, and we, can, we have creative ability in our words. So if we just think it, and we can speak it, we can have it. And my rebuttal to that is, first of all, that's not what that text is saying. But two, Adam just named the animals that were already there. Meaning Adam didn't create an elephant. Adam didn't create a giraffe. The giraffe and the elephant were already there. God just brought what he created by speaking it and brought it to him. And Adam just named it. So he just named the things that were already there. He didn't create anything. He just named the things that were already created. So there was no creative power in that. He was just naming what God already made. Because remember, in all the things God made, man was last. So when Adam showed up on the scene, all the animals and the plant life and the air and the fish and the sea, all that was already here. All Adam had to do was just name what was there. He didn't create the animals and the plant life and the water and the oceans and all that. All that was already here. All, all he had to do 
was this name what God what God already created. So Adam didn't create it. So they messed the Genesis account up too. Okay. Now, so that is how I interpret it in my book. And that's what I say in my book. And that's exactly what Corey Miner says in Smart Christian Channel. If, if you have a chance to check out his channel, please do so. And please look at his video, Are We God? Are We Little Gods? He did a fabulous, fabulous take on this. On this. However, when I, when I, when I watched his video, I, I looked at some of the comments. And they were saying, Corey, have you looked at Dr. Michael Heiser's stuff? And they were saying that as if to say Dr. Heiser was coming up against Corey. Well, I actually looked Dr. Heiser up. And he's really not. This is what Dr. Heiser says. Dr. Heiser says this. He says, yes, we are gods. However, he doesn't call it that, ladies and gentlemen. He calls it we're sons of God. Which the Bible does say in Romans 8, we are. It says, we, the created beings, are waiting for the sons of God to manifest. However, when, when Dr. Heiser says that, there is a context. And that sons of God manifesting is in the new heaven and the new earth and the new Jerusalem, i.e. Revelation 21, where we get a glorified body. And he says, and we will be like Jesus in the new heaven and new earth. And that, and when we have glorified bodies. So our gods, if you will, or the sons of God manifesting is a future event. Number one, it's not going to happen until Revelation 21. That's where it says there's a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem, and we get glorified bodies, and we rule and reign with Christ, okay? In the end, Revelation 21, that's where it says, she shall wipe away every tear from their eye, and there'll be no more pain and suffering and all that. But that's in the new heaven and new earth when we get a glorified body. So that's when our sons of Godship, if you will, starts. In this life, we still get pain, suffering, and we still got to go through like everybody else. Okay? So we don't, according to Dr. Heiser, and I agree with him on this, we don't get the sons of God, Godship, if you will, in the fullness until the new heaven and new earth and we get a glorified body. Until then, we don't operate in dominion right now. So he says we rule and reign with Christ in the new heaven and new earth. On the earth right now, it doesn't happen. And he's right about that. He's correct about that. He also says this in his video. Now, I'm going to post his videos to, to prove and back up all this up. Because he, he gave an interview, and it's about an hour long. And I actually watched the whole thing. And this is another thing that he said. He says, yes, we rule and reign with Christ in the new heaven and new earth. But we do it and we become like Christ as much as we possibly can. Because he says, he's like, there is, there's still a distinction between the, the creator and the creation. There's still a difference between God who created us and the beings he created. There's still a distinction. We don't become God himself. And he also says the reason being, because he made a joke halfway through it. He said, because after all, you know, we don't become little Yahwehs. You know, we don't become Mormons, you know. So he actually made a joke to prove his point. We don't become Yahweh himself or little Yahwehs. There's still a dis distinction between God and us. And Dr. Heiser says that. Okay? He also goes on to say, um, now his translation of Psalm 82 is a little different. Okay? It's a little different. He doesn't translate Psalm 82 as rulers, judges, and magistrates. He interprets and he tries to use the, the mind of the first century Jewish person. And he believes that the, the powers there or the little Elohims, he interprets the Elohims there as either maybe fallen angels or basically like the principal, principalities and rulers in the spiritual realm that rule over cities and countries. For instance, like in Daniel where it says Daniel was praying and the, the angel was coming to answer Daniel's prayer, but it took three, three weeks for, for him to get to Daniel because the angel said, because the prince of Persia came up against me, basically. So he's basically saying, like, the prince of Persia there was one of the little Elohims that was in the way, ruling and reigning about nations and about, um, about nations and cities and stuff like that. So the little Elohims, according to him, are either fallen angels or like principalities over cities and nations. Now, I'll be honest. I've never heard that before. That's the first I've ever heard of that. Um, I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just saying I've never heard of that before. 
But even in that context, then, so what, so what is Dr. Heiser saying? So when Jesus said, you know, doesn't it say your little gods or your little Elohims? According to then Dr. Michael Heiser, what he is saying, Jesus is now on the scene and Jesus came to destroy all of those principalities, destroy all of those powers, because the, the, the big G, the big Elohim is now on the scene and he's greater than all them. So I, he's basically saying, Jesus is saying, I've come to destroy all that because I'm greater than all that. So my point is, no matter which way you translate it, whether it's rulers, judges, or magistrates, or principalities and powers over cities and nations, either way, it's all going back and referring to Christ and how Christ is greater than all that because Christ is really God in his divinity. So regardless of how you translate it, you're going to come away with the same conclusion, and that is it's referring to Jesus and not us. So either way, you're going to come away with that, okay? So that's how Dr. Heiser interprets Psalm 82. And he does say we are gods, but number one, he doesn't say we're gods. He calls us the sons of God, which is what it says in Romans 8. But, number one, but number two, he says that doesn't happen until the future, i.e. the new heaven and new earth when we get glorified bodies, which is true. That is what Romans 8 says. He also says we are going to rule and reign with him, but he says as much as we possibly can, meaning there's a distinction between Jesus and us. So when it says we shall be like him, he says, yes, we shall be like him, but not him. There's still a distinction, right? There's Because because number four, because there's a distinction between the create, create Tor and the create Ted. And Dr. Heiser makes that distinction. So much, in fact, he actually calls false prophets false teachers and word of faithers and prosperity gospel people out. He calls those churches cults. Not my word, but his word. Dr. Heiser calls word of faith churches and prosperity gospel churches cults. So my point is, for those of you on the comments and in Corey Miner's video, are we little gods, question mark, you, some of you were using Dr. Heiser's comments as if somehow Dr. Heiser was coming against Corey. No, and he's kind of really not. He's saying a lot of the same things Corey is saying, that we're not gods. And again, for people that are promoting that, he's, he called those churches cults. So I wouldn't say Dr. Heiser is coming against them. The only thing Dr. Heiser would disagree on two things. He, he translates Psalm 82 differently. And I, and I, would come, I wouldn't say I come up against him, but I would say I, I would have a different take. I, have, I agree with Corey on this. Because in the Hebrew, it means rulers, judges, and magistrates. And that's how I interpret it in my book. Okay, So, they, so we would disagree there. Um, however, he says, we will rule and reign with Christ in the new heaven and new earth. So this is in the future. Well, I agree with him on it. On the earth right now, we don't have dominion ruling and reigning on earth right now. But see, to quote John Piper, this is the problem with the prosperity gospel people. They have an, um, a, an inflated eschatology, meaning they don't believe we're going to rule and reign with Christ in the future. Even though, Well, they do believe that, but they, they believe that that ruling and reigning starts now. They believe that ruling and reigning starts the very moment we get saved, not in the new heaven and the new earth, in the new Jerusalem, and we have glorified bodies. No, they believe we're going to rule and reign and, ha and have that happen right now. That's why you had Kenneth Copeland trying, you know, two years ago trying to rebuke covid you know, he's like, COVID-19, I stand in the office of a prophet and I curse you right now. Well, that was around like April 2020. Here it is now going into July 2022. COVID's still here. Millions of people have died all over the world. Unfortunately, I'll just be honest, transparent, including one of them died of COVID was my mom. Okay, so I know this very, very well firsthand. Um, Kenneth Copeland did not rebuke COVID. Uh, COVID killed millions and millions of people, including my mom. Um, and he didn't rebuke anything. Uh, COVID is still very much here two years later. And millions and millions of people have died because of his false prophetness, his false teacherness. Kenneth Copeland is a false prophet, false teacher, been that for years. And I show in my book where he's been teaching this since the 80s. Since the 80s, at least, that I can go back and track it. Now, with that being said... I also have a section in here, which I think is very, very good. When I was, um, it's called the gospel or new age teaching. And again, I talk about how the gospel 
that these prosperity gospel people preach is the same as the new age, okay? But I was introduced to a guy when I was stationed in Hawaii, and he was in Hawaii as well, from uh, Let Us Reason Ministries, um, and I have his website in my book. So you can look, look this material up and you can get it from myself, okay? Uh, there was a guy in Hawaii that has been tracking these false teachings since the 80s. And he put them together on his website where he just has quote after quote after quote after quote. I got like 20 some pages. I just copied and pasted it in my book. But before I did it, I, you know, I, I said, sir, can I use your material? I said, sir, because you got so much quotes and, and you tracked all this for like 40 years. Can I use your material for my book? I told him I was writing my book and I told him I was coming up against the Word of Faith, Prosperity Gospel Movement. And I said, sir, I said, you did a lot of the work for me. I said, would you mind me using your materials and make a long story short? He said, yeah, go ahead and use it. So I got permission. Okay. I got permission to use his materials. Uh, great, great brother in the Lord from Hawaii from Let Us Reason Ministries. And I got like 20 some pages in my book of his quotes that he researched from Kenneth Copeland to Joyce Meyer to Creflo Dollar to Kenneth Hagen Sr., who was a mentor of, of Kenneth Copeland, just quote after quote after quote of just false, false, false teaching. Uh, one of the, another infamous quote Kenneth Copeland would say was like, you know, everywhere Jesus is in the Bible, I just took Jesus's name out and I say any, anywhere, you know, Jesus is, I, I say I am too. So he just takes Jesus out and submits and he inserts Kenneth and it says whatever Jesus could do or wherever Jesus says I am, I say I am too. Basically, Kenneth Copeland is saying I am Jesus on the earth. He just takes out Jesus' name and inserts Kenneth Copeland. Okay, I got 20 pages of these heretical blasphemous statements. Again, from Let Us Reason Ministries in Hawaii. And he let me use his material. So, And I include all of that research and those quotes in my book to back up what I'm saying. So please get my book. Please feel free to check all that out. I have all that researched in here so you can check it out yourself. Um, now in my book, I don't have Corey Miner stuff and I don't have Michael Heiser stuff. Cause again, this is recent. This is in the last like month or so. I wrote my book in 2009 and then I got it published in 2010. Um, I misspoke in one of my last videos. I said, I, I wrote it in 2010 and it was published in 2011. It was actually a year earlier than that. I wrote it in 2009 and it was published in 2010, way before I met Corey Miner, way before I got a hold of Dr. Michael Heiser stuff, all of that. So my point is, on, the, on that real quick, two points. Number one, for those of you who commented as if to say Dr. Heiser disagreed with Corey, yeah, a little bit, but it's really nuanced. Now, he does disagree with them on the interpretation of Psalm 82. But other than that, he comes away with the same conclusion, that is, we are not gods. And it's so much, in fact, he calls these Word of Faith churches cults. So my point is, Dr. Heiser and Corey Miner and myself are all in agreement on this, that we're not gods. And number two, for those of you who are quoting Dr. Heiser to somehow say he was coming against Corey, you might want to go back and, and watch that interview again. Because in my opinion, I think, I think you might have taken him out of context a little bit. Because uh, he does say, yeah, we are gods, but he's talking about being the sons of God. And he's talking about that in the new heaven and new earth and we get a glorified body. He's not talking about that right now. Which is how the prosperity gospel word of faithers, you know, preach it and teach it. Um, so there's a lot of agreement there, is my point. Not disagreement. So, so I'm going to include Corey Miner's video. I'm going to include the videos of Dr. Heiser. Um, because I think it'll be a blessing to you. Um, I, um, the, Dr. Heiser's video is about an hour long, so it d does take a while to get through it, but it's, it's well worth your time. It is well worth your time. And that's what I did. I actually went back and just watched it to see what is he really saying. And I found out he's saying a lot of the same things that Corey Miner and myself are saying. And again, I can't speak for Corey, but I came out of the Prosperity Gospel Word of Faith movement. And I'm telling you, this is what they teach because it was taught to me. And it's wrong. It is blasphemy, it is her heresy, and it is false teaching. And it's really new age. It's not Christianity at all. And again, saints, I have that in my book and I show and I parallel it, how it parallels Oprah Winfrey and Eckhart Tolle and what they were saying back in 2009, 2010. Okay? So with that being said, that, that ends this section of the book. My next video is going to talk about... Um, 
you know, kind of like kind of dispensationalism really depends on how you define it. And, you know, when it comes to covenants today, how many covenants are there and who's under that covenant and how does that lead to Israel and the church and, you know, Jews and Gentiles and, you know, is the Christian church today the new Israel? I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about many layers to that. Okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about that in my book. And keep in mind now, I'm just going to give you this presence. The whole point of that, of the, you know, how do we view Israel and all that, that was really coming up against John Hagee. Because John Hagee has this extreme Zionism that basically says Jews don't have to accept Christ. They're already saved because they're still under the Old Covenant. And the Old Covenant, the Old Testament is still in effect for them. And they're basically good to go without accepting Christ. That is really heretical, really heretical. Um, and I don't want to get into it now because, again, that's a whole other video. But just know, to give you a backdrop, the whole point of me talking about Israel and is the church today the new Israel and all of those questions, all of those questions I try to answer, but I was doing it with the attempt to come up against John Hagee. Because back around 2009, 2010, he got really extreme with his support of Israel stuff, even to the point where they could like do no wrong, even if they were sinning, and they were automatically saved because they're still in covenant with God under the old covenant. And I'm like, what? And that's not biblical. That's really heretical. So I included that section in, in the book because of how blatantly heretical it was. So the, the, the point of that section is really to come up against John Hagee, but it leads into so many other things in our world today, okay? Which we're gonna talk about in my next video. But until next time, be blessed with this. So are Christians gods? No, no, we're not. We can't name it and claim it. We can't blab it and grab it. And we can't speak into existence. We have zero creative power with our words. And even when we do pray, we're praying and say, for instance, I'll just, I'll close with this. Let's just say we are praying and we're asking God for healing and God heals that person. Here's my question. Did we heal that person or did God? God did. Okay. So when we laid hands on that person and we spoke it via prayer, did our words heal that person or did God heal that person? God healed that person. So therefore, did we name it and claim it? Did we speak healing into existence? Or did we speak what God desired and therefore God answered what the prayer that God desired? We spoke what God wanted and therefore that's why it happened. Which is what the word says in 1 John 5. It says, this is the confidence that we have. If we ask anything according to his will... We know that God hears us and then we shall have what we say. Why? Because what we're saying or asking is in compliance with his will. So God did it as in accordance to his will. And we just pray what his will is and then it'll happen. So it's God's will has to be, has to be accounted for. And God's the one who gets the glory for bringing it about. It's not us. God does it. We pray it according to his will. Also means if we don't pray according to his will, there's no guarantee we're going to get anything because it has to align with the will of God. Okay? So God gets the glory because God's the one bringing about the healing and we pray it according to his will. Then it says we shall have what we say. So there's, there's no such doctrine as we have power in our words. No, we have... He has all power because what Jesus said, all power and authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. So Jesus is the one with the power. We just speak or pray what he wants as it aligns to his will and then it happens. So it's about him, for him, and to him and he's the one doing it. We don't get any credit and it's not power in our words. It's power in his words. Amen? So anyway, until next time, if this has been a blessing to you, Please hit the like button. Please share this with other people. And please hit the red subscribe button. If you want to feel, if you feel led to give, please go into my about page and you can give under PayPal. Please continue to share this, like this, and again, hit the red subscribe button. Please share this with other people. Get the word out. Get the truth out there so people can be set free. Until next time, know that God loves you and I do too. God bless.